Welcome to Train Signal. This demonstration video is from my Forefront Threat Management Gateway 2010 training course. And as you can see, we're back at the Threat Management Gateway console, and I'm in the firewall policy area. In the tasks pane, I'm going to choose Publish a non web server protocol, and I'm going to call this RDP2DC1. That's the name of the rule that I want to create. We're going to enable the remote desktop protocol to the server name DC1 and click Next. Well, what is that server IP address? I'll click Browse, type DC1, and click Find. And you're going to see that it comes up with the IP address right in the box. And it fills it in for me right here. And I'll click Next again. The selected protocol is going to be on this list. And we'll come down a little bit, and we're going to find the Terminal Services server. If I wanted to modify some of the information, I could, but I can make it by clicking the Ports button. But I'm going to keep the actual defaults in place for this particular demonstration. This is going to publish using the default port and send requests to the default port on the published server. I can look at the RDP properties as well to get some information about this particular protocol. And you'll see if I go over to the Parameters page, this tells me what port this is. It's 3389 and some other information that's not all that important for this particular purpose. And click Next. I want to listen on the external network. The address I want to use, which I accomplish by clicking the Address button, is a specified IP address. I want to add an IP 192.168.160.21. I chose that pretty much at random. It doesn't matter. And you'll see that that shows up over here in the selected IP addresses window. This is the address to which I will connect from the internet. And I'll click OK. So here you can see that we've got the network listener created now. This is going to be on the external network adapter with this IP address. And I'll click Next. And this is where I get the finished page. I can run through the settings to make sure I did it right. And click Finish to create the rule. Well, let me open up the rule for just so you can see everything. The rule is enabled. The action is to allow. You've seen some of this stuff before. The traffic type is RDP. We saw that before as well. From anywhere, that's going to be pretty typical. So we're going to allow the connection to happen from anywhere. Now, if you wanted to secure this rule a little bit, and let's say you were working with a consulting company that was going to help you manage your domain controller, you could set a list of IP addresses that are allowed based on what IP addresses are in use by the consulting company. So by opening up that properties page, you can see that you can make some modifications, but you can add a different network object that would allow you to restrict access to this rule, but we're not going to do that here. And we're going to go to DC1, which is the 254 address, and we're connected to the external network. And for the schedule, always. And again, we have some options here, and we, or we can create a new schedule if we like. And then we click OK. Now I'll apply the rule. I'll get rid of that. Click Apply. And click OK. Now, I'm going to go over to a Windows 7 machine from the internet. And we're going to try to attach to 192.160.21. Make sure I type that right here. Yep, everything looks good. And I've already started the remote desktop connection tool, and I've provided the IP address right here in the computer box. I'll click Connect, and you're going to see that I'm being asked for my credentials. Well, I'll choose to type in the password, and I'll click OK. I'm going to get some information saying that I am connecting to the server name DC1. This is a very good sign that this is working, but the certificate is not from a trusted certifying authority because I'm not using a real certificate system here. I'll click yes and you'll see that I am now on DC1. And you can see I'm running Active Directory users and computers. If I go to the start menu and actually open up the computer details, you'll see very quickly that this is indeed the server named DC1. So everything worked exactly as it was supposed to and the rule was it went forwarded all the incoming requests to the server named DC1. This is good.
Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.